Fitzpatrick. And I'm Asa. Live from the DeVos Children's Hospital, this is the CMN Celebration. Celebrating 17 years, live from DeVos Children's Hospital, this is the Children's Miracle Network Celebration on my ABC WOTV4. The president of DeVos Children's Hospital, and you know, doctor, someone also said, and a surgeon on the side pediatric surgeon on the side but I know that you were very involved what what makes you so unique not only do you run a hospital but you are a surgeon on the side you actually gown up wash up and get in the uh, get in the operating room and you were uh, a very integral part of Patrick's surgery tell us the seriousness of uh, a seriousness of his surgery well Gary Patrick um, had a very serious injury and in fact if you look at a number of people that have that injury, mm -hmm. most of them honestly don't survive it. So that's how serious it, it was. It was per uh, pretty incredible. And uh, tell us about how everybody here, just sort of as a team, came together to save Patrick's life. Well, one of the things we're real proud of at the Children's Hospital is that we re can respond to, mm -hmm. to terrible injuries like this. And it takes a tremendous team, uh, if you can imagine. Uh, this happened late in the day, and uh, we had a tremendous response from our emergency team, from the operating room, from all the therapists, the nurses, um, all throughout the hospital, the intensive care unit. And it wasn't just for Patrick, it was also for Patrick's family. So we had nurses that were helping the family get through this as well. And you know what's so unique about this, doctor, is, is, this, is this is not something unique. This is like routine day after day after day here at DeVos Children's Hospital. Well, as you were saying earlier, you know, there's uh, at a typical day in the hospital, there are 145 kids here. Uh, those, and they have to be pretty sick mm -hmm. or injured to be in the hospital these days. So. This is an extraordinary story, of course, but there are extraordinary stories here every day. There's the reason you call right there. All right, doctor, thanks. Congratulations. You're going to see Patrick's story coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Oh, boy, and how close he came to losing his life, but for the grace of DeVos Children's Hospital. This will really drive home the point, folks, that we really need this institution and all of the great programs. So watch, listen, and learn. Patrick Ferris is like most 10-year-olds, a lad with an eye for adventure and fun. And on this late February afternoon, snowboarding was on his mind. I remember helping him tie up his boots and saying to him, be safe. Gave him a kiss and off they went. Off to have fun on the hill, but this run with his buddy Asa would not include the usual hoots and hollers of adolescent joy. It would bring tears and sirens instead. I wasn't looking at the time, but then I turned and I knew I was going to hit it. The it was a rope that marked the side of the trail. How fast were you going? Not very fast. Not very fast. But sometimes speed's not the issue. The rope caught Patrick by the neck. At first I thought he'd just get up, but when I went down I knew that wasn't going to happen. Why? Because he was like breathing like and a gurgly sound and um, he was saying that he couldn't breathe. His injury was really a, a division of his windpipe or his trachea, uh, so you literally just can't get any air in, so you suffocate. I thought I was going to die. Like, I thought that was the end. Not the end, but the beginning of an experience that would end with a miraculous outcome at DeVos Children's Hospital. I think it was a combination of, of good fortune and good response. Patrick's buddy Asa was quick to get the ski patrol, which did their best to get some air, any air, into Patrick's lungs. Patrick's mom got the news that mother's dread was by her son's side in moments. I went directly to his side and picked up his hand that was, fingers were starting to turn blue and his ears were starting to turn blue and his Eyes were rolling in the back of his head. I don't ever want to see him like that again. Doctors managed to stabilize Patrick at Munson Hospital in Traverse City, but the real help that Patrick needed lie 140 miles to the south. DeVos Children's Hospital is widely known as the go-to hospital when exceptional care is needed for kids with extraordinary injuries. It takes uh, tremendous resources and expertise to have, not only the physicians to respond to injuries like this, but all the technicians, the nurses, the specialists, um, the operating room support um, to truly take care of something like this. An emergency airlift to Grand Rapids got Patrick to the help he needed in short order, but time was critical. Beth remembers the moments they wheeled Patrick into DeVos Children's Hospital's ER. 
the doors opened, there must have been 30 people lined up in the semicircle waiting to catch Patrick as he came in. And I just looked in awe and I, I, I guess I was just amazed to think that that many people had that kind of concern for my child. A team of specialists worked six hours to suture Patrick's airway together. What Dr. Postma had to do was put a breathing tube in, stitch, take it out, put the breathing tube in, let him breathe, pull it out, stitch. A successful surgery, but the sutures needed time to do their job, so Patrick was immobilized for 10 days. They put him in a paralytic state, um, you know, with the use of medication. All the while, mom remaining by his side, three weeks of in-hospital healing. I said, I'm not leaving until Patrick leaves. Three weeks of day in, day out interaction in a hospital is enough time to form a well-qualified opinion of a facility. It's just a phenomenal place. I, I don't know what other word to use. The staff, very supportive. Every nurse that we came in contact with made me feel like what I had to say was important. We knew uh, within you know, the, the first uh, 24 hours that we were in the right place. And there was uh, a great sense of the level of talent and the skill that was there, but also that sense of, of humanity that we got from people, you know, at all levels. Today, just months after an accident that kills most, Patrick is back with his classmates. It was like he never left, really. I mean, he picked right back up where he left off and it was just back to normal. There's still the question of whether Patrick will regain his voice. My vocal cords were, are, are paralyzed right now and we haven't found out about the nerves. Whether or not Patrick will ever regain his full voice is uncertain, but even as soft-spoken as he currently is, Patrick wants to make one thing loud and clear. They're like really good there and like I couldn't have gone to any better place. Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. Suzanne, the plans they made put an end to you. I walked out this morning and I wrote down this song. I just can't remember who to send it to. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend But I always thought that I'd see you again Won't you look down upon me, Jesus You gotta help me make a stand just got to see me through another day My body's aching and my time is at hand I won't make it any other way Whoa, I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end seen lonely times when I could not find a friend But I always thought that I'd see you again Been walking my mind to an easy time My back turned towards the sun Lord knows when the cold wind blows It'll turn your head around Well as I Time on the telephone line to talk about things to come. Sweet dreams and flying machines in pieces on the ground. Oh, I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I've seen lonely times when I could not find. But I always thought that 
I'd see you, baby, one more time again now. Thought I'd see. 